following will contain spoilers for any possible anime. Thank you! Hello? Hmm, this Joker, yeah? Hmm, let us give them a Halloween they never forget, yes? Hello everyone! Welcome to Halloween month, and this time I have some special guests coming over for our Halloween party. Oh, that must be them! Artemis, could you please get the door? Sure thing, Dragon! Hello again, Dragon! Um, uh, a happy Halloween as you'd like to put it. I hope you're not sore with me. White, she wouldn't invite you if that were the case. Or all three of us, for that matter, as well as Spinel. It's so good to see you, Grat Dragon. Uh, thank you for inviting us to the Halloween party. I hope we aren't be intruding too much. <laughs> Not at all, Blue. And thanks for bringing Spinel with. If you guys want, go on ahead and come inside. Just remember to be extremely careful of the... Ow! Stars, that hurts! Um, Yellow, remember what we said earlier in the invitation? Oh, right, of course. Dragon, a little assistance, please? Alright then, then without further ado, Espionage Pokemania! Oh my stars, I love my costume! Thanks Aaron, this really works well! Costumes are wonderful, Dragon, but well, well to be sense. honest, I didn't really trust you with the legendaries. <sighs> Have you not? forgotten that your powers practically scared us all to death in Steven Universe, let alone change your mind? So we all know that Halloween is the time of year where we talk about villains a lot. And in this case, I decided to go with anime villains this time around. Anime villains always come around in many kinds of variety. Some of them strange and bizarre that makes you want to question the writers, as well as there are some that are so freaky that you can't help but feel concerned of where this is going to go in terms of the paths of the heroes. So, in this list, I'm going over the top 10 anime villains that are so frightening and nightmarish that we really feel like we're in a fever dream. Alright then, without further ado you guys, let's start our top 10 
Hang on, hang on. I got this. This is... Alright, so who was the Joker who turned off the... Uh... I had to ask. precedes you, yes? Thought might to see yourself. Ooh. Ah, crap. It had to be you guys. No, Unfortunately, then? yes. Long story short, Joker's a psychotic clown and arch enemy of Batman. Horde Prime has the capability of mind controlling others similar to the have your power, but has the judgment of Judge Frollo. And then, of course, there is Skeksil, who was once a mighty being, but is a shadow of that former self. And unfortunately, he's responsible for the massacre of not only his own people, but also for the innocent residents of Thra, the Gelflings. It's because of him that Thra was nearly destroyed in the first place. so I can stop his sorry organic rear. You won't get to do anything, Foxy. Not when we have the run of a show now. Let's get this party a little more interesting, shall we? <laughs> like heck I would let you ruin Halloween. Just let me get my spells here and ah, give them back. All right, you ask for it. What the? Ah, oh, crud! They activate the censoring spell. Ha <laughs> What's wrong? Got a crow in your throat? You son of a! When I get a hold of that book, you're all going deep. <sighs> Just wait till I get my claws on you. Sticky web we're trying Good to, to know. I think I'll Wait a minute. Live. Where's Artemis and Spinel? Artemis? Spinel? We're here, Dragon. Good to know. Do you I see anything? I just as they the trap door. Well, fly up and get us all out of here. I think I hear something crawling up below us. I do see something in the corner hanging up there, but it seems like... Whoa! Um, this is going to take a while. No! Take care. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our fabulous game show, Survive or Die. Where Ghost Dragon will have to figure out how to help her friends and escape one of the enemies put on her list. Shall we see what happens to the spider she meets? Uh, <laughs> Dragon, 
do something quickly. All right, no more panic. Here I'll give you a quick lowdown and Loki will explain the rest. You're a psychic type, White, so you can't do much. But I think I know how to take on some of these guys. Just chew on the ropes and I think I could solve everyone with what the number 10 villain on this list. I just hope this works. Here goes nothing. I have to start it on this one. <sighs> Sorceress taking gulps her favorite food in her cave with all her brood. And the names of her children are Hot Tot Jin Jot Pea Pie Zan Zon Pig Snake Lun Lun and of course the dreaded Ichabod. If many of you have remembered seeing Del Toro Quest, you would understand why I put Taken and her children on this list. Sorceress Jagen was a very hard guardian of the gems, of the one seven gems, along with Soldi. She practically cursed the Rallid tribe for never speaking out again, and of course, transformed the um, city of Dor, if I remember correctly, into the, what was known as the Lake of Tears. Tegan takes her beauty very seriously, and she's very pissed off when you take on her children and destroy them. She's very filled with cunning and beauty, and that's definitely a dangerous combo you don't want to deal with. And what makes her children scary is the fact that they're shapeshifters. That's right, these children have the power to take on the shapes of people and objects. So think about it, when you're handi handling a pot bucket or a chair, it may eat you within a couple of seconds. But the reason why I put them so low on this list is the bickering and interactions with each other. They don't get along very well, and sometimes it's enough to give the heroes enough time to escape. Plus their greediness and vanity can be their own doing. But it still didn't change the fact that I put them in number 10 because they can be terrifying as heck when you don't see it coming. Dragon, I got the key! It looks like some sort of weird spider. Um, speaking of spiders, I think I'd better use my world wind right now. Coast is clear. Dragon, do tell me exactly what well, the plan is. Well, if you paid attention to Loki's crash course on Pokemon weaknesses and strengths, we should do fine for the most part. I know some of these villains by heart, and hopefully we can find a key to get us to where lo the trio are. Now, we just need to find the next key. Hey, wait a minute. I think I see something over there. But, wait a minute. Is it my imagination, or do I see a shadow with red eyes Red coming eyes? Out of us? Red eyes! Uh oh! Run! If you think Sorceress Taken was bad, the Shadow Lord is so much worse. He is basically the main reason why everyone in Del Tora had to fight for their freedom. He is an ominous presence that plagued Teltora since the beginning of time, and was stopping nothing to rule overall. And he is extremely cunning and smarter than Tegan in more ways than one. He has very special spies. Unlike Tegan's children, he has owls. The Owls are shapeshifters that specialize into taking any form they want. But unlike the children, they have more control. They don't have very specific desires. Dane's a level 3 Owl, which is probably a bigger reason to fear the Shadow Lord. With spies like him, he could take on a person as well as play the part easily. 
and to make matters worse, Dane for the Shadow Lord's minions are practically nearly indestructible, and he has a very crafty way of making sure that Leaf and the other heroes don't succeed in restoring the belt of Del Tora. Sly, crafty, and always one step ahead of a group and having an ominous appearance of being a massive shadow or a monster, nothing would stop this guy. And However, the only way you could actually stop him, despite of how I said it earlier, is using the seven gems of Del Tora that's used from the ancient belt of Aden. Unfortunately, I can't summon it due to my sensory spell problem. Luckily, I have a few okay, tricks up my sleeve. Got it! Let's get out of here! Bah! I thought it would work. Two of those enemies would have finished them for sure. And without that magic spook... Apparently, this dragon is more annoying than Batman himself. I swear I want to just turn him into a scale purse. Okay, so we managed to get away from the Shadow Lord and get this key. Now let's see what horrors are behind this door in terms of my list. Ah! I don't know! I didn't realize that there would be a room in space! Oh, great. It basically means I have to go over the next three villains of outer space in order to get through this. Do not let the small form fool you. There is a strong reason why Frieza was a very feared DBZ villain in the first place. For some of you may not know, DBZ means Dragon Ball Z. Anyway, Frieza was definitely a living nightmare. In his final form, he definitely comes off as smooth looking. And his chilling voice definitely gives him that edge of where he has a sense of mannerisms. But is not quick to throw a temperament when things don't go his way. And of course, he also had a god form. He has very strong powers and capability. He also knows that he has to try to be one step ahead of the enemy. He's still a bit arrogant though, and has a bit of a man-child personality. But again, I put him further up on this list is because of the fact that he's still a fearful foe because of his powers. Very destructive. And also another reason why I put him there is because he's a little off of having fear issues with the Super Saiyan race. But it didn't change the fact that before Goku arrived, Frieza practically killed thousands of people and destroyed millions of planets so he was like your stereotypical, tyrannical space ruler. Well, the Krogs are a bit of a higher contender. They're not as well known, but I feel like they're a little underappreciated in terms of anime villains. Anyway, the Krogs are a very hostile alien force in Oban Star Racers. Now, I know you're wondering why on earth I would put them there. Again, they're not as well known, and they're being underappreciated. Their physical black form is very hulking and intimidating. They can black practically blend into the shadows. Not only that, but the way they handle their negotiations is not very enlightening. 
they were hostile towards Earth, which is what resulted in the conflict in Oba in the first place. And they are not above of doing any means necessary of winning the race, even if it means taking a life and wrecking a ship. Just look at how they totaled that one. Not only that, but they can manipulate other people into doing their bidding. Now, Frieza is a little like that, but unlike Frieza, they do seem to handle it a little better than he can, uh, and don't seem to let their temper get the better of them. But they are guaranteed as worse anime villains than these guys in terms of space. Now, I don't know too many Precure villains, but I do have to admit, Dark Nest is probably the scariest big bad out of the two that I've seen so far. Anyway, Dark Nest is basically a very powerful big bad in Precure for Star Twinkle. Don't let his design, is he, which actually her design is pretty intimidating. That's right, it's actually a she, but this guy is definitely a big powerhouse. Even the Pretty Cure team had some huge issues with taking him down during, the, it's taking her down during a Christmas episode. And that's not the icing on the cake. The real icing on the cake is the fact that Dark Nest is a star princess, Orphicus and had been a black sheep and went against the princesses for quite some time and wants to destroy the entire universe just so she can make it in her own image. Pretty twisted. But to make it even more twisted is the fact that she used and manipulated the feelings of all three of her minions to do what she wants. And plus, the, she's the very enemy those three were trying to go against. So. And to make matters worse, she actually destroyed the Gal Ogre's home. So, the Orphicus was pretty twisted and manipulative, as well as the fact that the debut of the character was pretty terrifying and turned off and instantly changed the mood of Preaker. What made it even more sickening was that she needed Puffy or um, Fuwa in order to succeed in her ultimate plans of restoring everything to its former glory before creation, which literally means killing life on Earth. Combined with her snake-like appearance as well as the dark plants and her destructive powers, it definitely makes her one of the most terrifying villains in existence, which is why I put her further down the list compared to the other two aliens because she was very close to being successful, which made her even more scary. Hey, look you guys, there's finally a door, along with a UFO key. Let's book it! Yes? Uh, Dragon, how much well, longer are we, we seem to, to get so far well in the list? Maybe if we just hang out a little. <sighs> what do you want now, Skexil? Just a little wager, yes? Oh, 
yes, and I'm very sorry about that. True to the name of his quirk, he has the capability of tearing things down and fixing things up as long as he touches it with just one single finger. Heck, he even has the capability of destroying Magni with only just a small scratch. And what really takes him off is the fact that if you touch him, he is a germaphobe, so it's like activating a time bomb around him. But when he activates his power, it definitely is something that is disturbing. What makes him even more disturbing is his experimentation on poor Aerie and using the blood to make people worthless. Thanks to, upset, to his obsession, it definitely earned his spot higher up on the list, as well as his looks. Don't touch that red flower! The reason why I say that is because of the demons from the Promised Neverland. They are a stuff of nightmares. Not only do they have such grating voices and unearthly looks, but what can also make them terrifying is their intelligence. If many of you have read the manga, you see that they come in many shapes and forms, each more terrifying than the last. So for some of you who have season one, that's just the beginning of a nightmare fuel. But what makes these guys terrifying are those red flowers they use. It seems that they somehow drain blood, but their source of where they come from is even more disturbing. That makes these guys even more monstrous. You see, apparently, they, Emma and the rest of the orphans didn't realize that they're nothing more than food to these guys. And it wasn't until the disappearance of Connie and the discovery of her b dead body was, def was a terrible realization that these guys are nothing more to be food. To make matters worse, Isabel is providing this cattle brand along with them. To make even more terrifying is the fact that they don't have a proper form. They, uh, you know the expression, you are as you eat? Well, these guys take it to a whole new level. The demons literally have to eat humans in order to maintain their intelligence and their human-like shape. However, if they eat too many humans, they can have an extreme identity crisis and have a very grisly way of dying. Just take this queen, for example. <laughs> this definitely takes horror to a whole new level. And this is why I put, brought them further down to this list. Thankfully though, the children do have demon allies, but it didn't change the fact that they were in a very terrifying situation, not only through physical appearance, but these guys were extremely smart and could use every hunting technique possible to hunt the human children down whatever means necessary. If many of you have paid attention to Shigaraki's character arc through the anime as well as the manga, you'll definitely see that he has a huge growth in terrifying fuel. So he comes off as a bit of a man-child, throwing fits when things don't go his way and literally scratch himself till he bleeds. But then as we progress further through the camp arc, the season 4 arc, we definitely see that he's taking on the turn for the worst. And if you embrace yourself for season 5, because I'm pretty sure he'll show up at that point, pulling off no bonds and unleashing his nightmarish power. He ha was covered in hands, but you have to admit, it still was a terrifying sight when he goes detrimental. But his backstory is a little disheartening, so he's like one of those terrifying anime villains that do make you cry. But it didn't change the fact that I put him number 3 on this list, 
because of his bone chilling quirk decay giving him a higher up that makes him more terrifying as well as his maturing capabilities of becoming a villain. Oh, number two contender. He's a piece of work for that one. All for One is one of the greediest villains in this show, not hesitating to take whatever power he wants, as well as manipulating people whenever possible. Whenever the music, his opera music comes into play, it really is makes him a stuff of nightmares. His quirk definitely gives him long projectiles in his fingers, which can't tear people apart, but what really makes him terrifying is his face. There's literally nothing to it. It almost comes across as looking like that of a skull. And this is definitely something that would forever haunt us, for sure. Even this grizzly smile is something unnerving. And for many of you who've paid attention to the recent chapters in My Hero Academia, he takes a scarier turn for the worst, practically giving us the shining moment whenever possible. And definitely makes us sympathize a little bit more with Tomura being the victim of the situation. Anyway, through manipulation, again, and his looks, he c I mean, through what looks are more scarier and forever scars, he is definitely number two on this list. Dragon, I know this is a quick question and we are short of time, but why on earth is all for one number two? Who could possibly want be worse than that? All for one is nothing more than a mere skeleton, but try being a living corpse that will fall apart, literally, and being forced to harvest human remains whenever possible. Enter Joseph, or Catholic, okay, Catholic, bear with me people, I'm trying to pronounce his name right. Anyway, this was the wandering Jew that got cursed and somehow bonded with the grave digger. So because of the curse, Joseph is unable to have a proper physical form. His body keeps decaying and he literally has issues functioning properly without getting a proper human host. And because of that curse, he can't remember everything, but his what makes his demeanor even more grisly is when we get to see him fall apart. But also what makes him terrifying as like the rest of them is, is his cunning. But he definitely has a more manipulative and nightmarish way of doing it. If many of you had seen the episodes with that cat experiment, that would make you remind you of Validate if some of you were lucky enough to watch that. I don't understand where I would be going with this. He used that to learn about the beast's curse only to turn people into mindless demons or pieces of blobs. With his chimeras running around, he definitely is a thing of nightmares and not above manipulation, which is why I put him in number one. Oh look, there's the crew right now. Let's go get them. <laughs> Greedy sons of a. Give me back my spell book right now or you'll regret it. What make you so sure that I give back book back to you? You have no spell. You only be lucky because you hide stuff in certain places. Yes? Cinnamon, 
Now I can send these guys packing. This is not going to be pretty. But in the meantime, rest assured, the di rest assured diamonds, we're going to have a proper party once this is all done and over with. Well, this is a good time now for the rest of you folks to be head on home and enjoy the Halloween whenever possible. Stay safe. Remember to wash your hands. But thank you for coming over and watching my video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. Please make sure to watch my other videos whenever possible. Please do a comment about what villains practically scare the living daylights out of you. As well as don't be afraid to do a like and subscribe to my channel. And this is Dragon Veil signing off, but before I do, I just have one more thing to say here. And that is... Happy Halloween, everyone!